How's it going? Pretty good. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I was uh, jamming to A Mile From Home, and I have to say it's like a stellar debut album. It's incredible. Thank you so much. We we worked pretty hard on it, so. Yeah, and you guys worked on it for like a year before it was released. Is that right? Yeah, we worked with it. We worked on it, writing songs and intermittently in the studio uh, throughout last year. Yeah, really cool. And it has so many amazing special musician guests on it. How did you uh, get these people to collaborate with you? Well, fortunately enough for us, our you know our management has a lot of connections. He's been in the business for quite some time, so. He was actually able to introduce us to a lot of people, and we were able to ask them if they would uh, if they would come play on the record, and uh, and a lot of them obliged, fortunately enough. Uh, some of which were actually re coming back to reprise uh, guest spots that they'd done on our previous CD that we did, uh, That's like awesome. Joel. Oh, Joel Hoekstra from uh, White Snake, right? Yes. Yeah, that's really cool. I was like, there's a lot of like '80s metal you know, guitar riffs on there. And I mean, it makes sense. You know, a lot of these guys were huge in the eighties. <laughs> oh yeah. And Dustin's a, you know, he's a huge eighties guitar guy. So it was, it's kind of par for the course for him. Yeah. And speaking of, you know, uh, today is Slash's 56th birthday. Do you have it any uh, favorite um, guitar riffs from him? Or oh. solos? So, I mean, he has amazing solos as well. <laughs> uh I mean, the, the ever classic is, you know, you're going to have your uh, Welcome to the Jungle. You're going to have your Sweet Child of Mine. Um, I mean, yeah, those those never get old. I love those songs. <laughs> one that, a, a song that they did, and I've always been a, a big fan of it, and it's a cover song, but I always thought they did a really cool job with it, was uh, Since I Don't Have You. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, God, there's so many. <laughs> there's like. Have to like go through their discography, but yeah, there's so many amazing songs from them. Yeah, and they still rock. I saw Slash a few years ago in Boston, and he still kills it on stage. Yeah, I saw him not too long ago in uh, in Canada. I was up in Canada, uh, and I saw I got to see uh, Slash featuring Miles Kennedy. Yeah, so same really here. Cool That's experience. what I saw. Yeah, that was a good show. And I have to ask you guys about your song "Keeping Rock Alive," which you know I'm all about. Can you talk a little bit about this song? Well, so we had we had the bones of the structure more or less down, and we weren't really sure where we were going to go with it when we got to the studio. And uh, we started recording, and I I think all of us just started coming up with lyrics. Eventually, our manager approached us, and we kind of co co wrote the co wrote the the lyrics, and and he had some, and threw in some ideas in there. And we got the song together, and you'll you'll probably note that's the one song on the whole CD that I don't sing. Because we were getting into the recording studio, and I and I had laid down some vocals, but we all just wanted something else with it, which is kind of a weird thing to say as a band. <laughs> but it was just one of those things. Like we want, I wanted the song to, you know, to fit what we were trying to look for, and I just, I wasn't finding that in the way I sang it. So we there was actually a, a local musician in, uh, in Long Island where we recorded, who's incredible. Uh, he does a lot of the '80s stuff. He's got a band there called Holy Mother. Uh, his name's Mike Torelli, and so we asked Mike if he would come and sing the song, and I think Mike did an excellent job. Uh, I I finally got to hear it fully put together when I got my first copies of the of the CD in, and I was I was very impressed with how how that record that CD that oh goodness gracious that song turned <laughs> out. If I can talk, I got what you meant. <laughs> and I mean, you have a stellar voice. I mean, is who kind of inspired you with your sound i would say so i would say that i i do have you know a, a similar sound to to miles which is kind of ironic in the fact that i never tried to copy miles's approach i actually tried to be a dio clone as a uh, when i was growing up <laughs> i tried very hard to be a dio clone and i just it i just wasn't there um but i found as i got older i had a very similar timbre to, to miles and uh, i always thought it was ironic because i'm huge miles kennedy fan i've been an Alter bridge fan for oh my gosh uh probably since the second record i was a little too young with the, with the first record but the second record is probably where i i kind of jumped in um 
Yeah, Miles Kennedy a lot. Uh, the man that's right behind you, obviously, is oh, a yeah. huge inspiration to a lot of vocalists. Uh, Freddie's amazing. I love Freddie. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say those are probably the three biggest influences. And then you throw in the stuff of growing up being a, a big Foreigner fan and being a big Journey fan. I would say that, you know, maybe not so much intentionally, but just picking up things as I go and, and just being so much those music that music being so much a part of my life that it i can't deny that there's probably something in there i know there's so many like iconic vocalists from that time period so i'm sure they're all like big influences on you yeah i there was a period of time where i tried to do the the axel rose thing and i just decided that's not what i wanted to do yeah <laughs> Well, I wanted to ask you about the Crimson Seed song because there's a intro voice in the beginning. Who is that? And so, so uh, for the uh, the experienced '90s horror movie viewers, uh, that one is a uh, that's Mr. Captain Howdy from the movie Strangeland, who ah. was portrayed by D. Snyder. Oh, D. Snyder. Okay, <laughs> it makes sense now. <laughs> that's cool and was that your decision to put that in there yeah we had talked about wanting an intro and uh, we asked d if he would do it and his stipulation was that he wanted to do it as captain howdy we're like yeah that, that works perfectly <laughs> that's pretty cool is there a, a track on the album that you really love that's like a personal favorite to you um i would say i'm quite fond of back to you uh we wrote that that's probably one of the older songs that was on there. We'd been slowly writing it over the last two years or so. Uh, I finished the lyrics to it uh, when we were in Los Angeles when, uh, uh, a year or so ago when we were at NAMM. And, oh, man, it, yeah, that uh, song's very much about being on the road. Hmm. Um, that, that one has, always has a special place to me. Is that the one with uh, Chloe on it? Yes, Chloe Lowry. It's like a ballad. No, that's a nice one. Yeah, I was listening to it. I'm like, oh, it kind of takes a shift, you know, from the heavy stuff, kind of to something more mellow, which I really like. Yeah, I, I like to joke that we kind of have don't know where we're going to go all the time. So, it, it, you know, <laughs> when we start like writing us. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely, a, you know, and that's one of those things like – being big journey fans growing up like there's yeah certainly i'm i tried to be a dio clone but there's definitely a lot of that that journey and foreigner and and then the guitar work a little bit of a, a def leopard in there oh yeah who doesn't love def leopard oh yeah <laughs> do you have a favorite rock concert that you attended as a fan do you know the unfortunate part about being a musician is that we're so busy on the road we don't get to go to many um I would say probably my, mm, oh, it's hard. It's hard. I've got two. I've got two that were that were really cool. So I would say the first one would be, I got to see uh, Miles and company in Chicago. Um, I went, my wife got me tickets for my, for Christmas and she, uh, and she got VIP tickets and stuff. So I got to, got to meet him and, and uh, fangirl with him for a second. And, uh, Hopefully he doesn't remember because it was rather embarrassing. <laughs> uh, and then the other one would probably be the first time we got to open for Foreigner. We opened for him in St. Charles at Family Arena. And it was my first time getting to see Foreigner live. So uh, those are probably the two big ones for me. Well, those are good ones. Yeah. Have you ever, um, ever dreamt about going to a show in South America? Because I've heard so many good things like in South America, people just really get crazy at concerts. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff of uh, like um, Rock and Rock and Rio. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen all those those big festivals down there. Those those look incredible. Um, yeah, I think it'd be certainly cool to go, go do a lot of that stuff. Have you guys uh, performed like internationally quite a bit or – Kind of we have, more in the U.S. We have unfortunately not gotten to leave the States yet. I'm sure that will change soon. <laughs> as soon as, you know, things improve. Hopefully. Improve enough that people can start traveling again. 
Do you have like um, a dream bucket list of a place you really want to go to? I have one and it's kind of, it's a little, it's a dumb thing. Like, it's not like a, oh yeah, this is a holy grail for musicians. It's just a, you know, a kid growing up going like, I'm going to prove it to everybody. Uh, there's a, I'm not sure how much you're familiar with Kentucky arenas or anything like that. Uh, not too much. <laughs> so the main thing in Kentucky, there's two, there's, there's a KFC that's up in Louisville and then there's Rupp Arena. Uh, I'm from Lexington originally. It's where I was born. Um, so my thing is I've always wanted to play Rep Arena. I just felt like, you know, if I played Rep Arena, that proved, you know, to people that were around me that, that maybe didn't have the most faith in, in, uh, in what I did is like, no, I can do this. I can definitely do this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know too much about Kentucky. Well, just, you know, yeah. Kentucky fried chicken. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I'm originally from Michigan, so I should probably know more cause it's not that far away, but I don't think I've actually been to Kentucky yet. <laughs> it's an interesting place for sure. Um, I, it's, it's humid. It's a lot more humid than Michigan is. Really? Oh, yeah. I would not, I would not imagine that. <laughs> oh, it's 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 southern, southern with all the heat and the humidity. Not quite like Florida level. Uh, we sit oh, somewhere good. in the, like the seventies or eighties. Um, so it's not too bad. You get used <laughs> to it. Well, uh, is there anything else that people should be on the lookout from the band? Are you guys going to film any music videos or release we, more singles? We <laughs> are in the process of uh, getting a music video out. We've done our lyric videos, the the two with, with Forever Town and, and Back to You. Or not Back to You. Oh, good gracious. Uh, Forever, <laughs> Town, Forever Town and Greed. And we are in the works of, of doing another, another video uh, or actual, a full video we're doing. So that is coming. Um, we'll probably throw a little, a few more singles out, but with that, with the state of everything right now, everybody's jumping back on tour. We're kind of slow playing it a little bit. We're always looking for, for more shows and we're always looking to book tours and stuff, but without everything's going and especially with, you know, the light of new events, possibly of uh, more stuff coming, we're, we're slow playing it. We're, we're definitely trying to be careful. Yeah, well, that makes sense, but at least you guys can kind of enjoy that your album is out there. People can listen to it and you know, that's Absolutely. something to celebrate, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I have to well, ask, you know, working with um, seasoned musicians, have you taken away any advice from them? Because, I'm, you know, they've been in the industry for so long. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed is, is every so often you'll get advice but most of the time it's a, uh, Hey kid, watch, watch this. Mm. And, uh, and, and there's definitely a lot to learn when, you know, we've gotten to tour with so many, you know, prestigious musicians and, and guys that are seasoned veterans like John five, we got to watch John five and how, you know, he went about his, his business and okay, this is how the, his show is going to run. He's very, very fluid and, and very, very precise. Everything is very precise with John. Um, you know, getting to watch Jared, how, how he played watching foreigner, how they, they go about things, especially going on the on the shows with them. And then when we have the guest musicians with us on stage, how do they handle those situations? What do they do? How does their crowd interaction? Watching, and then we go when we go see other bands. I think there's always something to 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 watch and study. Um, especially so when I go and watch Foreigner, I'm you know I love watching Jeff Pilson. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Jeff Pilson live, but he's the bassist of Foreigner, and he is. Man, he's amazing. He's he he toes this perfectly fine line. Kelly's obviously the front man, so the the show is going to be about Kelly and it's going to be about Mick Jones. But Jeff toes this amazing line of being so charismatic on stage, while still not cutting in on anyone's toes. He's not he's not in the way. Everything is very very. It's high energy but controlled at the same time if that makes any sense yeah no, that makes sense and actually saw that foreigner is going to be doing a couple shows in massachusetts um next month so hopefully i'll get to see that they're fantastic i definitely recommend yeah I definitely no it's kind of like my goal to catch as many classic rock bands on their you know final tours <laughs> before you know they call it quits <laughs> 
Yeah, I understand that. That's yeah, but it, it's amazing to see that these bands are still, you know, going at it after so long. They're hard working too. I mean, you know, they're it's it's a young man's game. I'll say that it's it's definitely a lot of lot a lot of time and work involved, and you're and you're always moving. So you know, being that they're older, nothing nothing against them, but they are. I oh, mean, they still kill it. They're kicking. Yeah, it. and they still and seem to enjoy it. <laughs> and it's not like you know they're not that old. Um, but you know, they're like the classical dad rocker, like where you're just yeah. sitting on stage <laughs> and you're not moving. Not them. You go see Foreigner, and they are all over the place. Jeff is going to be running back and forth on the stage. Bruce is going to be running. If you look at Michael in the back on the keys, even he's moving around. Uh, the, and then you've got Kelly just – he's dancing around the stage. So, you know, you go see them. You're going to get a show. It's not just dad rockers just up on stage grooving a little bit. <laughs> no, they are moving. It's it's a show. That's it's inspiring. <laughs> I, I definitely take I, I definitely take uh, a little energy from that, and I go, man, I hope I'm doing that well when I, right? when I get when I get up there. <laughs> I know I'm like 33, and I bend down, and I'm like, oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> I, I, I feel you. I just turned 28, and like instantly, all my joints just like, oh no. <laughs> no, so yeah, seeing them moving around, you know, that inspires me to keep keep at it, stay active. <laughs> Absolutely. And have you heard of this uh, movement called New New Wave of Classic Rock? That's I have not. Thing. Yeah, apparently it started in the UK, but it's spreading to the US, and it's just like this um, community of new new rock bands that are kind of influenced by classic rock, and you know, like um, like your song, "Keeping Rock Alive." That's kind of oh, like yeah. their goal is to make people aware of all these new rock bands out there that are keeping rock alive and that's pretty cool i i'm glad that i know there was a previous term for it and this is a lot more kind and fond versus yeah. the uh the old dad rock <laughs> yeah they're <laughs> cool man was... they play that dad rock <laughs> no, i think it was inspired by um greta van fleet i guess around yeah, that yeah. time they're definitely inspired they've definitely got that 70s classic feel to them yeah i mean some people are like uh oh, they're led zeppelin ripoffs but you know they're they're talented kids i saw them live and you know they can play they're, they're incredibly talented you know i don't think anyone should hate on them for i mean they sound like zeppelin and i you know i i think they're incredibly talented i'm waiting to hear as they as they get older and the, as they progress through their music where they're gonna take it um, yeah i mean because we it, the thing with that is like we can hate on them for being Ze it, Zeppelin clones. The first album was very Zeppelin esque. Yes. You know, <laughs> but what's wrong with that? Like, you know, so many, so many people, myself included, we're like, man, I just, you know, what happened to the old days? What happened to, you know, Zeppelin? We talk like that's like the main one. We all go, there'll never be another Zeppelin. When are we gonna have another band like Zeppelin? But and every time we do, <laughs> every time we have a band that has Zeppelin esque qualities, we crap all over them. Like they're too much like Zeppelin. <laughs> Isn't this what we asked for? <laughs> exactly. I think the same thing happened with um, what were they called, Kingdom Come or something like that. Yes. See, I didn't even know that. I was like, man, these are really cool dudes. Like, because I had buddies that showed me Kingdom Come, and they're like, yeah, they got trashed on because they were Zeppelin clones. I was like, I mean, yeah, I can hear some <laughs> Zeppelin to them, but it's not, they're not Zeppelin clones or anything like that. Yeah. They sound cool. What was wrong with that? It was good music. Yeah, and I love Led Zeppelin, but let's be honest, they borrowed stuff in their music you know oh, yeah <laughs> half of their catalog i think was covers uh, yeah fair be it it was their take on covers uh but yeah. you know but back then you could kind of get away with it more than yeah. today <laughs> but yeah anyways it's it's cool to see that you know even though it's not mainstream at the moment you know rock is still alive and kicking <laughs> well yeah it, it you know and i think one of the things about being in the States is we definitely get jaded. We, you know, it's, oh, pop is ruling everything. But rock and roll music does really well, you know, overseas. Oh, yeah. Um, I think we just miss out on that because we just live in a, a very pop-centric culture. Mm-hmm. Where everything on TikTok becomes popular. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like, like I was saying earlier, I'm a huge Alter Bridge fan. And Alter Bridge tours here in the States. And they do all right. But then they go over to, like, Germany or something, and they, like, have hundreds of thousands of people go to a show where they sell out shows in like one day you know, know it's, it's that's why all the bands tour in europe these days because that's where they <laughs> they make all their money yeah i've got you know it's one of the things that we were talking with you know we had 
talked to Jared, we, he's like, yeah, I'm going to go overseas. And Jared did really well overseas from what I'm aware of, and, you know, and we're, you know, we're classic, you know, rock and roll artists and he's a very blues rock artist. And yeah, it doesn't necessarily do great here, but you know, you go to England or something and they love it. They're looking mm -hmm. for it and they just don't have enough of it. And we have so many rock bands that just fly under the radar that people are like, yeah, whatever. And then they go to Europe and it's like, no, we don't have, we need more of this. We need more. <laughs> Oh man, if only Europe was a little bit closer, I would be I there every day. <laughs> well, I uh, really appreciate your time chatting with me and hopefully get to see you in the Northeast sometime. Absolutely. I certainly try to try to get back up there. Um, you know, we, especially with New York connections and stuff, we can, tr we try to get up to the, up to the n Northern coast. Yeah. The but little nook in there. <laughs> the little nook in there. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. Well, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, best of luck with everything. I really enjoyed the album. Thank you so much. Uh, you have a great day as well.